Hey everybody, welcome in that new Golem tutorial where I'm going to show you how you can control shading attribute distribution. So here I'm running uh, Golem 7 and um, it's true that by default uh, when you create your character you can assign some shading attributes and you assign them some random range uh, mean and max value but you're never sure how it's going to be distributed because it's fully randomized here. So if I just say that uh, my um, shading attribute here will have a random value between 0 and 3, which can be 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, picked randomly. And uh, within my shading graph, I'm going to say that uh, this attribute here will feed a switch and the different value between 0 and 3 will be red, blue, green or yellow. If I render that scene, um, I can end up with something like this. So it's randomly distributed, but you can see there's way more blue because, well, I don't have much uh, much luck here. Uh, so I'm having way more blue than the rest. And uh, let's say you want to control this and you want to, I don't know, maybe evenly distribute or maybe have more yellow in your final distribution. So how can you do that? So um, there's different way actually of doing this. Uh, sometimes rendering engines, they provide you with mathematic functions. Uh, if we take a look at Arnold, for example, they're having all those math functions and you could probably use um, some index that we provide. Uh, I mean, if you go into Golem here and you say that you don't want to have random, rather than random, you can use channel and as a channel name, uh, you can check the documentation, but you can have something like an index. Uh, which is a one, two, three, four, five for each entities, and you can use those data uh, with some mathematic functions to maybe normalize or apply a mod, uh, modulo functions, or rearrange or, or or ramp it connected to a ramp or something else. But let's say the rendering engine uh, doesn't provide you this, or you don't want to deal with the shading engine. You can obviously do that as well uh, on the Golem uh, side. So rather than using channel or random, I'm going to use attribute here. And now I'm saying that uh, the value which will be outputted for this shader attribute, which will uh, be um, read from the shading graph at render time, it will not be randomized anymore. It will use an attribute name called uh, my at. Feel free to change the name if you're not happy with those. Uh, you can create as many as you'd like to if you need to control uh, them in different ways. So here I'm going to save that. I'm going to close it here. And now I'm going to deal with my at and... Uh, sending its value. So first I need to create that attribute on the simulation side. So on my entity type, which represents the same character than the one I've been dealing, I'm going I'm going to go into entity types attributes and I can use the golem simulation attributes. So uh, consider the simulation attributes as uh, just value you're gonna, that you can attach to each entities. They're like PP attributes, but for golem entities and way more faster to handle. So I'm going to create a new one, which I'm going to name the same name uh, than the one being defined into my character in the name of the attributes I want to deal with. And um, I can set up different types here. The types I want to use is going to be integer because I'm having four different integer values, which can be 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, I don't really care about uh, the initial values here, uh, just to stick to 0. And uh, I've got multiple ways to control that attribute value now. So uh, let me, by the way, check uh, what's the value. So I'm going to run the sim and uh, it can be maybe relevant to actually show uh, that uh, value within the viewport at any time. So I'm going to go into the display attributes of my character, display per particle attributes, and I'm going to add a new golem attribute to display, which will be my at. And uh, by default, it just uh, displays that uh, value on the selected entity. Uh, so I probably want to enable that for any uh, entity. So I just go into the visual feedback that just popped uh, when I click on an entity or you can open it from that uh, shelf icon here. And uh, within the viewport settings here, uh, here it tells that you don't want to display anything for any entities, just for the selected entities, or this is for all entities. And now I can see the value of my at for all my entities. Okay, so that's great. Uh, now I can see it's set up to zero, which is what is expected. And let's say I would like to make an evenly distributed uh, value for my entity. So um, that takes place into the behaviors. That's something I'm going to change at, at behavior time. So I can probably add um, a channel operator behavior, which I can turn, um, I can change its trigger like right away uh, to just to put it like a, an init behavior. So from the first frame, it set that value. And after I can do something else. Um, 
I'll let you figure that part. I just want to concentrate on the behavior operator here. So what I would like to, so uh, behavior channel operator means that I can uh, make some complicated, complicated or simple uh, mathematical graphs or fetch something from the scenes and use that, compute it, uh, change its value, rearrange, module, whatever. Um, so first thing I want to do is say, I want to create a new output. So this is where I'm gonna write the value of something. And uh, my output here is gonna be, so I'm gonna select that node. I opened the channel operator editor here. And when I want to edit, it's not a PP attribute, it's gonna be a golem attribute. And uh, as it's a golem attribute, I want to specify this is this to say this is uh, my entity attribute to say it's a golem attribute and the name of it is my attribute. So this is where I'm gonna write it uh, and I'm gonna rename that node my at output. So whatever I'm gonna plug into this will be written into my golem attribute that I can see into the viewport. And uh, I, I'll be able to take that value and bring that to the shading as well. So um, evenly distribution between um, four different values. So I can bring an input here, new node. Uh, that input is gonna be, I don't know, um, I'm gonna take the particle ID. Particle ID is just like particle one is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Uh, so here, let's uh, figure what's the new value of this. Let's uh, put that smaller, run the sim. And now I can see the particle IDs of my characters. If I pick a character, I can even see the visual feedback for that guy here. So the particle ID is gonna be two. It's gonna be written into my channel, which is also two. Um, just a quick tip as well. You got the spreadsheet, uh, which allows you also to see the value of my at at any time. If you don't want to display it within the viewboard because maybe you got too much entities, you can even like check it here. Um, great, so I would like to rearrange this between uh, zero and three so I can bring a module operation. So I just press tab here, bring an operation node, put it here. Uh, my operation node by default is a plus. I don't want to have the plus anymore. I want to uh, do a module and the module takes what, two inputs, one which is uh, um, the source and uh, the other one which will be uh, by what you're gonna divide do the module operation with. So I'm gonna create a new uh, input here. Uh, which is gonna be plugged as uh, the second uh, element here. And I'm gonna put just a four. Uh, so it means that now whatever comes out here will be uh, applied a modulo by four and will be written as an output here. So let's check what's gonna be the value of that. Let's uh, put that smaller and de-zoom this as well. And now if I take a look, I'm adding um, zero here, uh, three, one, two, and if I count, uh, I can see I'm having zero one time, two times, three times, four times. I'm having one, one time, two time, three time, four times. So it's evenly distributed. Uh, so that's great. So let's say I would like to bring this uh, to the shading. Probably I would have to rename the node here to make it more relevant. I'm gonna name that four. I'm gonna name that particle ID if I want to reuse that later. Uh, and that's a mod. You can actually reduce from the graph. You can see this particular ID here, mod four, written into a golem attribute, uh, which is my at. Um, so let's yeah, let's say we want to uh, bring that out uh, to the shading. So I need to export my simulation, and uh, as a uh, um, um, new attribute has been created, you want to write this down into the cache. Right now, that attribute only exists into the simulation, but you want to put it into the cache. So I'm gonna say here, golem attribute. I want to add another one. I want to add my art as a new uh, node here. And uh, when you export that scene now, uh, it's gonna be exported, written into the cache. And if I render, those value will be forwarded to uh, my shading graph if the thing uh, goes according to the plan. And here it is. So if I count the number of balls, which has uh, which are blue, uh, I've got four, red are four, yellow are four, green are four. Excellent. So, okay, that's evenly distribution. Let's say I would like to do something else. Uh, let's uh, cut that down. Uh, so I'm gonna unplug this for a while. And uh, let's say you would like to have a ramp to control this value. Uh, so I can bring uh, another input here. So that's done now. Oops. Yep. And uh, multiple options here. Um, and one of those option is ramp. I can create a new ramp node here and I'm gonna say what I want to write down is gonna be the result of the ramp of ID zero. You can create as many ramp as you want to. So you may index them 
multiply them together or whatever. So here I'm going to say I want to use uh, hashtag rem0 hashtag um, ash, sorry. And uh, means that here I'm going to read the value from here and uh, the value from here comes from that node. So that's the ramp which gets attached to my channel input. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what's going to be outputted. Let's go back into sim. Uh, it's probably going to be 0 or 1. Oh, it's mostly 1. Uh, yeah, it's mostly 1 because the RAM uh, tells 1. So um, now I still want to have uh, something which is between 0 and um, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. So as the output range here, I'm going to say my value output is going to be of type um, integer can uh, round floor till whatever um, or if you just stick with float and you connect that out to an attribute which will be int it will be casted anyway so let's round it uh, the value will be between 0 and 3 and uh, here those are the chances that you will um, return 0 and those are the chances that you return 3 so right now you can see the curve is pretty high so it means that every time it will return free for all the characters uh, let's say you want to have something which is kind of evenly but random still randomized distributed um, now you got something like this but if you count you may end up with more um, you know uh, that that we had before and let's say you want to have may maybe way more um, value of free than the rest uh, you can just uh, do a ramp like this so now you're saying that maybe I don't know, uh, one fifth of the character will share a value between 0, 1, 2, but the other uh, four fifth will have the value of 3. And if you change that ramp, you can see now um, you got some guys, they have 1 here, but uh, most of them afterwards, they got a value of 3. And if you got something like a bigger range, uh, you can just change your ramp. And now you got a 2, 2, 1, and mostly 3 uh, for the rest. Uh, keep in mind that this is going to be executed in simulation. So anytime you change this, you need to re-export the cache for that value to update. Uh, so um, it's it's going to be written and it's going to be back into the shading graph. So um, let's do with this. Export that and check with a quick render as my attribute is going to be exported. Uh, uh, I'm already done and you can see mostly uh, free value here. And... Um, just as a final note, I'm not going to uh, use it here, but um, keep in mind that still in layout, uh, you can still apply some stuff. So if you select a character, for example, uh, let's say that guy here, which uh, is yellow. Let's go with F9. Uh, okay, not sure why my selection is not working. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, oh, okay, sorry, the pop tool is actually taking the selection here. Okay, um, so that guy here, um, if I go there, I set, uh, obviously, uh, set the value here. You can um, do a, a replace shading attribute here, node, and uh, you just have to write the name of the shading attributes and uh, um, and the, the new value that you want to apply. I'm not really sure what's the syntax here, but that's probably like my add space. Um, save that as a layout file. Let's see. And um, if you render, that's going to change, hopefully, the value of that guy. So now you can see I set up this value to zero. Uh, so I've overridden what was written into um, the simulation cache and what was computed by the channel output. And uh, actually, what something which is pretty convenient is that uh, the selector allows you to select multiple entities. So um, let's say you know that you have 16 entities. You know that um, you can select entities from uh, uh, 1001 to um, uh, 4001, which means you're selecting uh, four entities here. Uh, this is the way they're numbered within Golem. Um, the, the index is going to be stored at the beginning and afterwards it's going to be the ID of the crowd field. So 1001, 2001, 3001, 4001 and four, are four entities. So I can put a range like this here, say that my attribute is going to be zero, uh, save it here. And uh, now you can range that and apply uh, some specific values here. And you can combine multiple selectors, take a look at the documentation for um, the selectors. You can write uh, some you know, simple expressions here to help you deal with uh, simplifying the selection there. So uh, hopefully it helps. Uh, let us know if you get any questions and uh, see you into the next video.